Hello, my friends. Hello again. Here we are for, I think, I think it is the seventh part of Les Leo Un Libro en Inglés. Today we're going to continue with the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime. So I made a playlist, Lista de Reproducción, for this little series I'm doing about where I read you guys this book. I will put that down in the description below. Shout out to Alex. Thank you, my friend, for your wonderful comments that you always leave me. It makes me very happy to read them and to see how much you are learning. This video is for you, my friend. All right. Here we go. I think I would make a very good astronaut. To be an astronaut, you have to be intelligent, and I am intelligent. You also have to understand how machines work, and I'm good at understanding how machines work. You also have to be someone who would like being on their own in a tiny spacecraft thousands and thousands of miles away from the surface of the earth and not panic or get claustrophobia or homesick or insane. And I really like little spaces so long as there is no one else in them with me. Sometimes when I want to be on my own, I get into the airing cupboard outside of the bathroom and slide in between the boiler and pull the door closed behind me and sit there and think for hours and it makes me feel very calm. So I would have to be an astronaut on my own or have my own part of the spacecraft which no one else would come in. And also there are no yellow things or brown things in a spacecraft so that would be okay too. And I would have to talk to other people from Mission Control but we would do that through a radio link up and a TV monitor. So they wouldn't be like real people who are strangers, but it would be like playing a computer game. And I wouldn't be homesick at all because I'd be surrounded by lots of the things I like, which are machines and computers and outer space. And I would be able to look out of a little window in the spacecraft and know that there was no one else near me for thousands and thousands of miles, which is what I sometimes pretend at night in the summer when I go and lie on the lawn and look up at the sky and put my hands around the side of my face so that I can see the fence and the chimney and the washing line and I can pretend that I'm in space. Okay, so he said the washing line. We would say the clothesline. That's a rope that you hang clothes on so that they can dry, okay, after you wash them. He's in Britain, so apparently in Britain they would say washing line. We say the clothesline. Go hang your clothes up on the clothesline. And all I could see would be stars. And stars are the places where the molecules that life is made of were constructed billions of years ago. For example, all the iron in your blood which stops you from being anemic was made in a star. And I would like it if I could take Toby with me into space. And that might be allowed because they sometimes do make animals go into space for experiments. So if I could think of a good experiment you could do with a rat that did not hurt the rat, I could make them let me take Toby. But if they didn't let me, I would still go because it would be a dream come true. The next day at school, I told Shaban that father had told me I couldn't do any more detecting, which meant that the book was finished. I showed her the pages I had written so far, with the diagram of the universe and the map of the street and the prime numbers, and she said that it didn't matter. She said the book was really good and it, as it was, and that I should be very proud of having written a book at all, even if it was quite short. And there were some very good books which were very short, like The Heart of Darkness, which was by Conrad. But I said that it wasn't a proper book because it didn't have a proper ending because I never found out who killed Wellington. So the murderer was still at large. If you say that a murderer is at large, it means that the police have not caught them yet. Okay, They have not been found and arrested. They are at large. And she said that was like life. And not all murders were solved. And not all murderers were caught, like Jack the Ripper. I said I didn't like the idea that the murderer was still at large. I said I didn't like to think that the person who killed Wellington could be living somewhere nearby and I might meet him when I went out for a walk at night. 
and this was possible because a murder was usually committed by a person who was known to the victim. Then I said, Father said I was never to mention Mr. Shear's name in our house again, and that he was an evil man, and maybe that meant he was the person who killed Wellington. And she said, Perhaps your father just doesn't like Mr. Shears very much. And I asked, Why? And she said, I don't know, Christopher. I don't know because I don't know anything about Mr. Shears. I said, Mr. Shears used to be married to Mrs. Shears, and he left her, like in a divorce. But I don't know if they were actually divorced. And Shaban said, Well, Mrs. Shears is a friend of yours, isn't she? A friend of you and your father. So perhaps your father doesn't like Mr. Shears because he left Mrs. Shears. Because he did something bad to someone who was a friend. And I said, But father says Mrs. Shears isn't a friend of ours anymore. And Shaban said, I'm sorry, Christopher. I wish I could answer all these questions, but I simply don't know. Then the bell went for the end of school. The next day I saw four yellow cars in a row on the way to school, which made it a black day. So I didn't eat anything at lunch, and I sat in the corner of the room all day and read my A-level maths course book. And the next day, too, I saw four yellow cars in a row on the way to school, which made it another black day, too. So I didn't speak to anyone for the whole afternoon. I sat in the corner of the library, groaning with my head pressed into the join between the two walls, and this made me feel calm and safe. But on the third day, I kept my eyes closed all the way to school until we got off the bus, because after I have had two black days in a row, I am allowed to do that. But it wasn't the end of the book, because five days later I saw five red cars in a row, which made it a super good day. And I knew that something special was going to happen. Nothing special happened at school, so I knew something special was going to happen after school. And when I got home, I went down to the shop at the end of our road to buy some licorice laces and a milky bar with my pocket money. And when I had bought my licorice laces and a milky bar, I turned around and saw Mrs. Alexander, the old lady from number 39 who was in the shop as well. She wasn't wearing jeans now. She was wearing a dress like a normal old lady and she smelled of cooking. She said, what happened to you the other day? Because remember guys, this old lady was trying to fix uh, some snacks and drinks for Christopher, but he left because he was scared of a stranger. <laughs> and uh, I asked, which day? And she said, I came out again and you'd gone. I had to eat all the biscuits by myself. I said, I went away. And she said, I gathered that. I said, I thought you might ring the police. And she said, why on earth would I do that? Okay, one more little note, guys. He says, I thought you might ring the police. Here in the U.S., we would never say that. We say call. Call the police, okay? But in Britain, to ring, to ring the police, to ring your neighbor, to ring a friend, means to call, okay? But I would never say that. I call. I call people, okay? And she said, why on earth would I do that? And I said, because I was poking my nose into other people's business, and father said I should not investigate who killed Wellington, and a policeman gave me a caution, and if I get into trouble again, it will be a lot worse because of the caution. Then the Indian lady behind the counter said to Mrs. Alexander, Can I help you? And Mrs. Alexander said she'd like a pint of milk and a packet of Jaffa cakes, and I went out of the shop. When I was outside the shop, I saw that Mrs. Alexander's dash hound was sitting on the pavement. It was wearing a little coat made out of tartan material, which is Scottish and Czech. She had tied its lead to the drain pipe next to the door. I like dogs, so I bent down and I said hello to her dog and it licked my hand. Its tongue was rough and wet and it liked the smell of my trousers and started to sniff them. <laughs> I told you guys already, but just a reminder, trousers is pants. We would say pants, okay? Pants, pantalones. Then Mrs. Alexander came outside and said, His name is Ivor. I didn't say anything. Mrs. Alexander said, You're very shy, aren't you, Christopher? And I said, I'm not allowed to talk to you. And she said, Don't worry. I am not going to tell the police, and I am not going to tell your father, 
because there is nothing wrong with having a chat. Having a chat is just being friendly, isn't it? I said, I can't do chatting. Then she said, do you like computers? And I said, yes, I like computers. I have a computer at home in my bedroom. And she said, I know. I can see you sitting at your computer in your bedroom sometimes when I look across the street. Then she untied Ivor's lead from the drain pipe. I wasn't going to say anything because I didn't want to get into trouble. Then I thought that this was a super good day and something special hasn't happened yet. So it was possible that talking to Mrs. Alexander was the special thing that was going to happen. And I thought that she might tell me something about Wellington or about Mr. Shears without me asking her. So that would not be breaking my promise. So I said, and I like maths and looking after Toby. And I also like outer space and being on my own. And she said, I bet you're very good at maths, aren't you? And I said, I am. I'm going to do my A-level maths next month, and I'm going to get an A grade. And Mrs. Alexander said, really? A-level maths? And I replied, yes, I don't tell lies. And she said, I apologize. I did not mean to suggest that you were lying. I just wondered if I heard you correctly. I'm a little bit deaf sometimes. And I said, I remember, you told me. And then I said, I'm the first person to do an A-level from my school because it's a special school. And she said, well, I am very impressed and I hope you do get an A. And I said, I will. Then she said, and the other thing I know about you is that your favorite color is not yellow. And I said, no, and it is not brown either. My favorite color is red and metal color. Then Ivor did a poo, and Mrs. Alexander picked it up with her hand inside a little plastic bag. Then she turned the plastic bag inside out and tied a knot in the top so that the poo was all sealed up, and she did not have to touch the poo with her hands. And then I did some reasoning. I reasoned that Father had only made me do a promise about five things, which were, one, not to mention Mr. Shears' name in our house. Two, not to go asking, asking Mrs. Shears about who killed that bloody dog. Three, not to go asking anyone about who killed that bloody dog. Four, not to go trespassing in other people's gardens. Five, to stop this ridiculous bloody detective game. And asking about Mr. Shears wasn't any of these things. And if you are a detective, you have to take risk. And this was a super good day, which meant it was a good day for taking risks. So I said, do you know Mr. Shears? Which was like chatting. And Mrs. Alexander said, not really, no. I mean, I knew him well enough to say hello and to talk a little in the street, but I didn't know much about him. I think he worked in a bank. The Na National Westminster in town. And I said, father says that he is an evil man. Do you know why he said that? Is Mr. Shears an evil man? And Mrs. Alexander said, Why are you asking me about Miss, Mr. Shears, Christopher? I didn't say anything because I didn't want to be investigating Wellington's murder, and that was the reason I was asking about Mr. Shears. But Mr. Alexander said, Is this about Wellington? Sorry, guys. But Mrs. Alexander said, Is this about Wellington? And I nodded because that didn't count as being a detective. Mrs. Alexander didn't say anything. She walked to the little red box on a pole next to the gate to the park and she put Ivor's poo in the box, which was a brown thing inside a red thing, which made my head feel funny, so I didn't look. Then she walked back to me. She sucked in a big breath and said, perhaps it would be best not to talk about these things, Christopher. And I asked, why not? And she said, because. Then she stopped and decided to start saying a different sentence. Because maybe your father is right and you shouldn't go around asking questions about this. And I asked, why? And she said, because obviously he is going to find it quite upsetting. And I said, why is he going to find it upsetting? Then she sucked in another big breath and said, because because I think you know why your father doesn't like Mr. Shears very much. Then I asked, did Mr. Shears kill mother? And Mr. M and Mrs. Alexander said, kill her? And I said, yes. Did he kill mother? 
And Mrs. Alexander said, No, no, of course not. He didn't kill your mother. And I said, But he did give her stress so that she died of a heart attack. And Mrs. Alexander said, I honestly don't know what you're talking about, Christopher. And I said, Or did he hurt her so that she had to go into a hospital? And Mrs. Alexander said, Did she have to go into hospital? And I said, Yes. And it wasn't very serious at first, but she had a heart attack when she was in hospital. And Mrs. Alexander said, Oh my goodness. And I said, And she died. And Mrs. Alexander said, Oh my goodness, again. And then she said, Oh, Christopher, I am so, so sorry. I never realized. Then I asked, Why did you say I think you know why your father doesn't like Mr. Shears very much? Mrs. Alexander put her hand over her mouth and said, Oh dear, oh dear, dear. But she did not answer my question. So I asked her the same question again, because in a murder mystery novel, when someone doesn't want to answer a question, it is because they are trying to keep a secret or trying to stop someone from getting into trouble, which means that all the answers to those questions are the most important answers of all. And that is why the detective has put that person under pressure. But Mrs. Alexander didn't answer. Instead, she asked me a question. She said, so you don't know? And I said, don't know what? She replied, Christopher, look, I probably shouldn't be telling you this. Then she said, perhaps we should take a little walk in the park together. This is not the place to be talking about this kind of thing. I was nervous. I did not know Mrs. Alexander. I knew that she was an old lady and that she liked dogs, but she was a stranger. And I never go into the park on my own because it is dangerous and people inject drugs behind the public toilets in the corner. I went to go home and go up to my room and feed Toby and practice some maths. But I was excited too because I thought she might tell me a secret and the secret might be about who killed Wellington or about Mr. Shears. And if she did that, I might have more evidence against him or be able to exclude him from my investigations. So. Because it was a super good day, I decided to walk into the park with Mrs. Alexander, even though it scared me. When we were inside the park, Mrs. Alexander stopped walking and said, I'm going to say something to you, and you must promise not to tell your father that I told you this. I asked why. She said, I shouldn't have said what I said, and if I don't explain, you'll carry on wondering what I meant, and you might ask your father. I don't want you to do that because I don't want you to upset him. So I'm going to explain why I said what I said. But before I do, you have to promise not to tell anyone I said this. I asked why. And she said, Christopher, please, just trust me. And I said, I promise. Because if Mrs. Alexander told me who killed Wellington, or she told me that Mr. Shears had really killed Mother, I can still go to the police and tell them because you are allowed to break a promise if someone has committed a crime and you know about it. Miss Alexander said, Your mother, before she died, was very good friends with Mr. Shears. And I said, I know. And she said, No, Christopher, I'm not sure that you do. I mean, they were very good friends. Very, very good friends. I thought about this for a while and said, Do you mean that they were doing sex? And Mrs. Alexander said, Yes, Christopher, that is what I mean. Then she didn't say anything for about 30 seconds. Then she said, I'm sorry, Christopher. I really didn't mean to say anything that was going to upset you, but I wanted to explain why I said what I said. You see, I thought you knew. That's why your father thinks that Mr. Shears is an evil man. And that will be why he doesn't want you going around talking to people about Mr. Shears, because it will bring back bad memories. And I said, was that why Mr. Shears left Mrs. Shears? Because he was doing sex with someone else who, when he was married to Mrs. Shears? And Mrs. Alexander said, yes, I expect so. Then she said, I'm sorry, Christopher, I really am. And I said, I think I should go now. And she said, are you okay, Christopher? And I said, I'm scared of being in the park with you because you're a stranger. And she said, I'm not a stranger, Christopher, I'm a friend. And I said, I'm going to go home now. She said, if you want to talk about this, you can come see me anytime you want. You only have to knock on my door. And I said, okay. And she said, Christopher. And I said, what? And she said, you won't tell your father about this conversation, will you? 
And I said, no, I promised. She said, you go on home and remember what I said anytime. Then I went home. All right, guys, we'll stop there. I hope you have enjoyed this continued reading of the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime. This, this little section that I was reading was pretty interesting to me. I didn't want to stop. But I have to pick up my son from school, so we'll continue another day. I hope you guys are enjoying this English input, this content with a ton of vocabulary. I hope it is beneficial to you. Como siempre, mis queridos amigos, muchísimas gracias por ver. Nos vemos pronto.